is explaining the variation in housing prices as a function of certain explanatory variables, right? Now, I have the data set here in which I have the price of house in thousands, right? So if I say 65, that's $65,000, right? Uh, we have the number of bedrooms, the average lot size, square footage, um, the square footage of the total house, and the square footage of the total lot, right? A house sits on a lot, and the lot size is always bigger than the square footage of the house. But then again, it depends upon the number of stories. If you have a five-story house, then the square footage of the house would be higher than the lot size. But mostly, we have two-story houses here. And often, the square footage of the house is less than the square footage of the lot. But what is more, what is more important for a house? Is it the square footage of the lot, or is it the um, or is it the uh, square footage of the, 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 the built-up area? My assumption is, I believe, that the lot size is important, but what is more important is the livable area and the size of that, right? So um, we have, in this case, an explanatory variable which is categorical, and that is colonial. If the house is built in a colonial form or style, then the house is identified as one and zero otherwise. Right? And we also have these, some of the variables transformed using the log transformation. And I'll explain to you why the log transformation. But we have um, the price of the house transformed as log, the assessed value uh, transformed as log, the lot size and the square footage of the unit and all uh, expressed as uh, logs. The first thing we do is uh, we look at the descriptive statistics. In any regression model, you start with the descriptives, um, you see that we have 88 obs observations in our data set. And the average price of a house is $293,000. Right? So right here, the average price is 293 and the minimum is 111 maximum is $725,000. The average number of bedrooms is 3.5, minimum is 2, maximum is 7. The lot size is, average lot size is 9,000. These are homes in Texas, 9,000 square feet. Uh, the minimum size is 1,000, and the maximum is 92,000 square feet. You will notice that the built-up area does not have that much fluctuation. The average built-up area, or the size of the built-up unit, is 2,000 square feet. Minimum is 1,100. Maximum is 3,800, or almost 3,900 square feet. Right? And colonial is 1 and 0. You have 0.69 as the mean value, which if you think about it, 69% of the housing units were built as colonial, right? And it only varies between 0 and 1. And whenever you have a categorical variable, uh, the average value gives you the percentage of the units or percentage of the people who have that characteristics. In this case, colonial housing style is common between, is, 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 is shared with by 69% of the units. I'll go back just one second here. And my, my model here says housing prices are a function of size of the unit. And I have various measurement of size, bedrooms, lot size, as well as the built-up area, and then style. And there could be many, many other variables, right? You can have um, the exterior, the furnace, uh, presence of swimming pool, number of uh, fireplaces, uh, proximity to subway or metro, proximity to freeways or highways, so on and so forth. But we're just building a similar model, simple model. So if I were to plot the relationship between various variables, one good technique which is common in all software is the scatter plot matrix, right? So I put the housing prices here, right, at the top, and you see as the number of bedrooms increase, you see here two bedrooms, four, three, four, five, six, seven. You see generally there's a rising trend in housing prices, but not a linear relationship that we are used to seeing. And that is the number of bedrooms suggests that uh, units Average price increases with the number increase in the number of bedrooms, but not as a definitive trend. If you look at the size of the lot in square feet, you see that as the lot size increases, so does the price of the house. But again, not a very strong relationship. But if you see the relationship between size of the house, the built-up area in square footage, which is right here, you know, 200, 
400, 600, 800, no, sorry, here, between 1,000 to 4,000 square feet. And the price of the housing units here, you see that the there is a very strong relationship. You could, you could see that there's sort of a linear relationship between the two, right? So where is the real relationship visible in this case? It's visible more for the uh, house, uh, size of house and square footage and the house price, and more so than any other variable that we have. So once I have done the descriptive analysis, once I have looked at the uh, I've graphed and, and plotted the relationships, the next step for me is to look at the model. And I have plotted various models for you. Right? Here, the first model just uses, here I have four models, and I've just put them in one table. The first model says that the, uh, the conditional mean of the house is $72,000. And then for each additional bedroom, the price of the house goes up by how much? $62,000. Now, what is the minimum number of bedrooms in our data set? Two. two. So 62 times two, 130, 124, plus 72,000, and roughly 200 plus thousand dollars, right? So this is the, the first model. Notice that the model fit is 0.24. So number of bedrooms on their own explain 24% variance in the price of housing, right? Mm -hmm. And I have added these three uh, stars, which you can check here, that these model is, uh, the coefficient is statistically significant at 99.999% level. In the second model, I add to the number of bedrooms the lot size, right? Because think of it, um, you can add more bedrooms to a house, right, without changing the lot size. True or false, right? You can add more bedrooms to the house without changing the lot size. What happens then? You will notice that uh, the, the value, the coefficient reduces in value a little bit, but you know the model improves in its fit. The variance is now, 32% of the variance is explained by the model, and an additional bedroom gets you $57,000, and for each square foot increase in the property lot size, you have um, sort of $200, is it two or 200 or $2? $2 increase in the, in the property value. So each square footage in the lot size gives you two additional dollars. Why? Because if you multiply it by 1,000, you get 0 .002 times 1,000 is $2, so $2.8 or $3 roughly. Now here, I have added another coefficient, colonial to the model. And it suggests that the colonial houses sell for $2,000 less than non-colonial homes. But notice that there's no star next to it, so which means that this is statistically insignificant. Basically, I can remove this from the model without any loss in the model fit. Colonial or no colonial, colonial does not make any difference to the model. And lastly, I'm now using the square footage of the built area rather than the lot size. And that alone then takes away the, the statistical significance from bedrooms, right? Because it's such a strong predictor that the square footage of the uh, livable area that the number of bedrooms is no longer statistically significant because number of bedrooms is actually accounting for uh, the square of footage or square of footage, uh, square footage of the built up area is accounting for the number of bedrooms. In any way, if you look at the model here, you'll see that the best fit is when you add the square footage and you're explaining how much 